What's up, everybody? My name's Old Ego Ethan Page, and you're listening to Mars TV. Hola, amigos. Yo soy El Mariachi Loco, and you're watching the Mars TV podcast. What's up, bro? This is Robbie E, and you're listening to Mars TV. What's up, invaders? It is your favorite Martian, Skylar Mars, introducing you to another episode of the Mars TV podcast. Uh, I just wanted to be very special. We have a son of former WWE and WCW, I don't think he did any ECW stuff, uh, superstar, uh, Brian Pillman Jr. I'm really excited to have him on the show. He is either just about to start training or has just started training. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But either way, uh, I especially wanted to bring him on so that uh, us as fans can show our full support for a second generation guy trying to get into the business you know so everybody you know show him your love follow him on all his social media give him your full support um i will put all those links where you can follow him on social media in the description you can usually just you know search up brian pillman jr and you'll find him but at any rate uh i've been doing really well uh myself lately you know i have been trying to go to as many indie shows as i can with uh my trainer who I, I'll probably tell you his name someday, but the thing is that he plays a heel a lot of the time, and, you know, it, it just seems weird for, like, a heel to take some kid under his wing and, you know, show him the ropes. It seems like a very face thing to do, so, uh, I guess, you know, with, with his permission, I would give him a shout-out, however, uh, that is not gonna be a thing, uh, just yet. Um, but at any rate, you know... I've been going to a lot of cool indie shows. Uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be meeting up with uh, Lucha Sword, you know, from Lucha Underground, the seven foot monster in a snake mask who do backflips. I mean, that's pretty hard to argue with. And uh, I've met up with a lot of guys like Jesse Roberts and Eli Drake lately, and that's that's really, really cool. And Navajo Warrior. Navajo Warrior is really cool. Um, you know, and. I have been, you know, absorbing this stuff like a sponge, just trying to learn my craft. And I'm excited to be, I'm happy to be a part of this business. I'm happy to be a trainee. You know, this is where I want my life to take me. And so far it's looking good, and I like that, you know. Um, but at any rate, um, I'd like to announce we now have Mars TV t-shirts on teespring.com slash Mars TV Teespring store. Again, all these links will be in the description. I have quite a few cool uh, designs up there. I have my Los, Los Marcianos del Mall t-shirt, which is a parody of Los Perros del Mall. I have the I'm an Invader t-shirt. I've got an I Believe t-shirt. That's Podcast in the Galaxy. And I even have a throwback t-shirt from that time I super kicked M. Bison from Street Fighter. Because who doesn't want a t-shirt of me super kicking him bison from Street Fighter? That was good times. Oh, man. And speaking of um, t-shirts, you can also use my discount code to get mid-card guy apparel t- um, where you can get cool t-shirts and whatnot of cool different wrestling themed designs by the mid-card guy apparel clothing line. You can use the link midcardguy.com slash Mars TV to get 5% discount. All right, we're going to kick off the show right now. Deal. Am I breaking up or anything? Not at all. <laughs> if it's clear, I can't complain. There we go. All right. And we are crystal clear, ready to go. How you doing, man? Good, good. How about yourself? I just got out of yoga practice, so I'm feeling pretty, pretty zen, pretty good. I just got back from leg day. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I saw that on your Instagram. You're uh, working legs, huh? Working legs today, man. Who'd you work out with? I worked out with my dad and my little brother. Nice, nice. Do you guys go to, like, the gym gym, or? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What's yeah, the we gym li- called? We live in this weird little, like, I don't know, I always call it a Stephen King town, because it's, like, one of those middle-of-nowhere towns, like, Stephen King read a book about, but it's, oh, like, yeah. it's a nicer community, though, so it has, like, it has, like, a little clubhouse with, like, a gym and stuff, so we'll head over there. And we'll do oh, our okay. work, you so know? It's like a little, okay. Nice. Cool. Where do you live again? I live uh, in uh, AZ in the States. 
You're uh, you're Canadian, yeah, right? No, I'm in Cincinnati. Oh, you're in Cincinnati. Yeah. All right, because you know your, your dad was Canadian. I just made the assumption. Yeah. Yeah, but you had heading... trained. He, he trained in Canada, but he was also actually uh, born in Cincinnati. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, because Cincinnati. Okay. But he went to Canada to train. Similar, kind of like how I'm going up there to train. With uh, Storm, right? Yeah. I imagine he's been supportive. Oh yeah, he he lo- yeah he's all for it. I'm I have Looking been absolutely surprised. Like all I did was announce this episode, and like left and right, uh, supporters have been uh, coming in and saying stuff. Nice, nice, yeah. People are excited. I know, I know that. Yeah, that's they want where it goes, and I'm I'm excited too. I'm excited to see where it takes me. I mean, it says here on your Instagram profile, it specifically says finish what your daddy started. <laughs> yeah. That's the plan, and I like the sound of that, man. He wasn't done, yeah. He, he wasn't done. He I mean, wasn't done. You could be the pillman that holds the world title. Who knows? Oh, yeah. I mean, 10, 12 years from now, who who, who knows, man? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking to keep chasing it for, you know, as long as I live. How old are you? I'm, I'll be 24 in September. That's what I was guessing. You couldn't be much older than me. Yeah. Um, How old are you? I'm 19. Nice. So you got a, a little headway on me, but you're not that much oh, older than me. Right. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got younger friends. Yeah, that man. I, uh, met through like esports and stuff, playing games growing yeah. up. I just want to let you know that we're already recording. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's it's it, it's it's, it's pre-recorded, so you know this isn't live. You don't have to worry about anything like that. Anything that happens that like you don't like, I can just cut out. Oh yeah, I mean you could do all the editing. I'm you know. I don't have to have any say in that, but, uh, yeah, if you want to get started on your questions and stuff, you can. <laughs> uh, kind of already are. The show is pretty casual. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I like it when it sounds like a conversation. I, I honestly, like, when I came up with the idea for the show, I was just ripping off Cole Cabana. Oh, okay. And that's what he does. Yeah, just kind of sit and chip, chat. Yeah, exactly. Um, you ever heard his, his show yet? No, I have not. Is that, a is that another wrestling podcast? In, it is indeed. That was, um... Yeah, his is a pretty big deal. That was where okay. the entire inspiration for mine came from. Okay. Yeah, and now we're that. yeah now we're like a year. How do you in. spell it? My show or Colt Cabana's? Colt Cabana. Uh, Colt Cabana, like his name or his show? How do you spell the show or his name either? Or? Uh, his show is called Art of Wrestling. Okay. Yeah, you can find it on like I don't know Google Play or iTunes. It's all free. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's really cool. He interviews guys. It's a good place if you're looking to find like little bits of advice. Nice. Yeah, one of the reasons. That, yeah, like I was just listening to uh, Eli Drakes, who I just met a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know he was saying that if you want to get bigger, you have to eat more. And I don't eat very much. Period. So <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, man. So you were telling me that you're you're just getting into like watching wrestling too. Yeah, I, I actually didn't watch wrestling growing up. It kind of wasn't, you know, like a hobby of mine. It was always kind of like, oh, yeah, my dad was a wrestler, but everybody that I was surrounded with wasn't into wrestling, and my mother kind of, like, pulled me away from that type of scene. I can see she why. Like, oh, you know, that killed your father, you know, the wrestling Ugh. killed your father and all this, and, and she, you know, she was just trying to, I guess, protect me from <clears throat> the industry, but... um. You know, I, I've, I quickly found out just from these, you know, this past year or so of getting back into it and looking, and it, it really is interesting, and it really is something that I think would be phenomenal and really fun to do. Just like, I mean, watching it, I think watching it live is definitely the, the ultimate experience. Oh, of course. That. Yeah, um, it, it, on TV, you know, it's, it's it's easier to watch it, and, you know, you get to see the, the, the behind-the-scenes little snippets and the little uh, scenes, you know, the little... I mean, it's just so much better live. I mean, I love it. I think oh, it's, yeah. It's loud. It's 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 impressive. You really get to see how, how difficult it is, some of the feats that they're pulling off and stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Um, you know, what I do a lot of the time, I mean, I do it just for, even if I don't get to, to bump or, like, learn, like, actual moves or anything like that, I'll go to indie shows if I know the promoter or somebody involved, and I'll just set up rings and listen. Awesome. So, are you thinking about getting into wrestling yourself? Or? Absolutely. Oh yeah. For the What's past like now? for the past like seven months. Oh, so you have you been training? Yes, I have. 
Oh, okay. You have been learning stuff. Okay, I thought you said you weren't able to. No, no, no. Well, well okay, so, like, um, see, there's no real, like, school anywhere close to where I live, but there's okay. a couple of indie feds. So, you know, there's one fed I'll go and I'll train around with, and then the other one I go just to just to list, just to kind of learn. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like, that's kind of the deal with me because there's, there's no schools around, but, you know... Well, um, I imagine that experience is going to be a lot different, but yeah. I'll have a tiny bit under my belt by the time I get to school, and uh, hopefully that'll be helpful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was actually planning on so going what, to... Do you know what school you're going to go to? Or? I wanted to go to Storms, too. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, I've been told it's the best. That's why I've made that decision to go there. That is the, the style I am the, the biggest fan of. Um, if you go back and watch Storms matches, I mean, it's like uh, poetry in motion, you know? Oh yeah, he's he's funny guy too. I think he's got a, a lot of people say he's like dry or whatever, but I think his character is actually funny. Like it's actually well put together. <laughs> I always thought it was funny because it was dry. I've had a couple of conversations yeah, yeah. with the guy. He, yeah, I think I think that was like his his gimmick. Like people thought it was just bad, but Nick, it was actually funny because it was you know gimmicky like that. You know, absolutely. Like he did it. He did it intentionally because if you hear the guy talk like on his podcast and stuff, he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of character. He's got a lot of humor to him. It's oh just, yeah. He just played that that you know silly character like that, like oh, like I'm just this Canadian, you know, dim bat, you know, like. But he played it so well, I think. So like when I go back and watch it, a lot of the people that criticize him are, are they're ignorant, I think, in that in that regard. Absolutely. Um, you know, and like um, even before like people started to get a taste for who. I am, I would email him and ask him for little bits of advice, and what's weird is, like, with a lot of guys, they probably wouldn't put in the time. Every time I asked, I got a response, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he really just does want to teach the next generation, so it's definitely... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, oh, and quite literally in your case. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like he reached out to me. I did, you know... Absolutely I not. I didn't think so. Yeah, but he was very, like... I mean, he was like, oh, wow, like, that's really cool. Like, I, you know, I get to train Brian's son. Like, I'll give you a discount, and, you know, I'll make it easy for you to find a place up here to stay and everything. So he was very accommodating and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that was pretty so, much the like, brunt of what I thought. I had to go out of my comfort zone and really wake up and finally decide that this was for me because so many years I grew up, it was like, you know, oh, people are going to forget about my dad. Like, no one's going to give me a chance in this industry. Like, you know, I'm not that athletic or I'm not that big and strong, but like slowly I found out that I, you know, I did have these, these good genes. I was athletic and I, you know, I, I am able to get up in front of a crowd and, you know, you know, say something and make a name for myself. So I finally had the confidence to do that and, and everybody I researched with and, you know, I, I am lucky. I do have, you know, I do have connections. Like I was able to get on the phone with Steve Austin. He was a good friend of my dad's. Oh, that's cool reassured me and he was like hey dude Lance it's really the you know he's one of the best places you can go and so that made me feel really good so oh yeah I that was that was something that I thought would um, be happening it's just like it's something that I saw immediately like the second I got a hold of you is that um, like I said just out of the woodworks just random people like support 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 people you know they're they're rooting for you man so keep doing what you're doing thank you it's awesome oh yeah I am I was watching an Instagram uh, live video of a guy by the name of Kevin Cross, and okay. um, I mentioned I was going to have you on my show, um, and he was like, that's like the coolest thing ever. You know, his dad was like a huge inspiration to, to me, and... That, that killer Cross? That exactly, who are you talking about? Yes. Yeah, okay, he, yeah, he, he messaged me on Twitter, so we've, we've been talking too. He's a good dude. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's just kind of cool. I... I can't imagine, see, I'm not trying to, like, if you haven't figured this out yet, I don't want to be the guy to bring it to you, but, I don't know, do you feel any, like, I guess a bit of a weight on your shoulders? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pressure to, um, I guess, perform and to not be a total bust, but I'll tell you what, Mars, um, I've dealt with so much shit in my life. I you can swear, it's fine. Obstacles. Yeah, I've dealt with so many obstacles and uh, things getting in my way in my life. Just the way I, you know, being I was raised in a very, you know, very shitty, very poor environment. I don't know if you've listened to my podcast, my previous podcast with the Dave Dynasty show. Did you ever get a chance to listen to that? I did not, but I um, I read about the stepdad stuff. Yeah, 
So, okay. So, like, you know, if you if you have it, maybe maybe I'll link it somewhere and you can go and uh, listen to that. But, um, yeah, like, it, I've just gone through so much shit that I almost feel like I did all that because of this. And I feel like there's almost no pressure. There's, there's like, negative pressure, really, because I know that no matter how – how hard I fail, how bad, like, or how poorly I do, it'll never be worse than what it was. Like, I'll never be in a, in a worse rut than what I was growing up. So it's like, I either, I, it's either A, I succeed and I go on to be something great, or B, I go back to being way better off than I was. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I've got literally nothing to lose. Like, I can go back to being an average, like, I've already graduated college. I've already got a nice job working in technology, the field that I love. Like, I literally have nothing to lose. I can come back to this job. If this doesn't fool Paul through and people, and I don't live up to the hype that people think I'm going to live up to, then I can always come back to this. And it's almost like with all the support, like you said, with so many people pulling for me, I would literally have to try to fail. Like, all I have to do is go out there and bust my ass. You know what I mean? Oh, all yeah. the card, All the cards are on the table. Like, I've, I've got, you know, I've got all the cards on the table. Everybody's pulling for me. If I, if I don't work my ass off, then yeah, I'm going to get, I'm gonna, it's going to be a rude awakening. But if I go up there and bust my ass and show that I can do all these things and I can actually be, you know, the, the successor to flying Brian Pillman, then there's nothing that's going to stop me. All I got to do is bust my ass, and that's what I'm going to do every single day, and I've been doing it every single day. Absolutely. Now, I'm not waiting till September. I've been busting my ass in the gym. I've been honing my, my yoga practice and getting my body in great shape, eating right. Oh, yeah. And not going out and drinking and stuff on the weekends. Like, I might go and have a few drinks here and there, but I'm just not, you know, I'm not in that lifestyle that a lot of young kids my age are where they just kind of go to the bar every Oh, yeah. Like, shit, yeah, like, I'm just not into that. I'll stay in. You know, I'll look forward to my workouts. I'll work out all day Saturday, and then I'll, or I'll, I'll work out uh, uh, every day. That, but Friday, I'll rest on Friday, and then I'll be back at it Saturday morning working out. And then I'll get good sleep on Saturday, wake up and work out on Sunday. Like, I just, you know what I mean? There we go, man. Staying up till three, partying and smoking lifestyle anymore. Like, I did all that when I was a young kid. I got out of my system. And now I'm here to perform. I'm here to be an athlete. And I'm here to be a role model for for other guys that are getting into the business. I like the sound of that, man. Um, And that's, um, I wonder if, like, I don't know. I never really thought about this myself because I was never really the, uh, I was never really either popular nor a party guy, so I never yeah. really did any of that. I have still yet to have a, a drop in my life, not saying there's anything wrong with it, just never have. Um, you know, and I never really thought about this before, but, like, I don't know, has it ever been weird, like, being kind of younger and having, like, your, your friends who may not be fans kind of look at you and be like, really? This is what you're doing? Yeah, so, like, a lot of people... You mean like people that aren't wrestling fans? Yeah, like, exactly. So like everybody thought like I guess that was kind of like what got me a few friends like growing up. Like people thought, oh wow, his dad was a wrestler. Like because when you're younger, like you think, oh that's really cool. So like growing up in like middle school, like in middle school I was like bullied pretty badly actually, just because I was so poorly treated that I didn't have a lot of clothes. I didn't have a lot of clothes. My my mom and my stepdad didn't like make me shower or anything. They didn't give a shit. So I always smelled like shit wearing the same jeans every day. So in middle school, I was bullied pretty hard. But, like, come high school when I started lifting and actually playing football and stuff, people started to think, wow, this guy is really cool. His dad was a wrestler and everything. So I kind of got popular through that. So everybody, all my friends growing up, they always had it in my head. They were like, well, Brian might, you know, Brian actually might do this. He might actually become a wrestler. And I would always be like, oh, no, it's not for me. Like, I'm into football or I'm into lacrosse. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, your dad did football, too. Oh, yeah, I know, and, and that's the thing. I love football. I mean, football really saved my life. You know, it really got me into the right crowd. Like I said, I was just like, I was in a really rough neighborhood and a bad crowd, but football brought me into the good crowd. So, like, um, everybody kind of had it in the back of their heads, and obviously so did I, that this might be an opportunity down the road. But, like, a lot of my friends were just so much more into, you know, video games and football and stuff that none of us really got into watching wrestling. Like, there was, you know, there were some guys like that, you know, that, that watch wrestling. Absolutely. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess they're a little bit shocked that I, after all, I, you know, after going to school and, like, getting my, you know, getting my foot in the door at a nice company and, like, doing all this stuff to settle down and move out with my friends, I guess they're all kind of like, wow, Brian's turning around and going and become a wrestler. But it's like, 
you know, it's a little bit of a shock to them to like see me turn around and do that. But at the same time, like I've finally reached a point in my life where I'm settled down and I'm not like guessing of what's tomorrow. You know what I mean? I used used to just not be able to sleep tonight because I didn't know like what tomorrow would hold. Like I didn't know if I would have a place to sleep that next day. But like now that I'm settled down, I've got a nice job where I can save up money. I can actually save up money and go and afford this trip to Canada and really expand on this, on this opportunity and give it a shot. So I think so many people are like, wow, it really is happening because they kind of thought it was going to happen just like I did. You know what I mean? Our yeah. whole community of friends, like my my coaches and, you know, my sports coaches and my neighbors and stuff, like they all kind of knew like this this is probably going to happen for him and he's probably going to take advantage of it. Oh, yeah. Um, that's really, really cool. I had, you know, I mean, my experience was um, actually a lot um, different. It's that like this... I've always wanted to do this. I've never wanted to do anything else. You know, I'm going to go oh, yeah. through I'm going to go through with it and get my college degree. I'd like to turn my show into like a business business. That's so, smart. yeah, so I'm getting my degree in broadcast journalism, which is literally what I'm doing right now. That's awesome. I, I had a class like that in high school where we we made YouTube videos and stuff and I wish I would have like went, actually went to school for that, like the media type stuff. But I was so afraid of, like, not getting a job in it, and I just wanted something secure, you know? I wanted something, like, easy, like, business, you know? So I ended up going into business information systems, which is, like, databases and stuff. Yeah. Which is, you know, even more of, like, a growing field. So, like, I wanted something that was, like, you know, easy to get a job, quick job, you know, solid mid-range pay, you know, like, 40K a year, you know, something simple. And uh, something secure, something I wouldn't be, like, struggling to find a job after college. So literally, I was hired before I even graduated college, right? Oh, yeah. I was hired during the last week of school, already had a job lined up, you know. So that was good. For me, that security, having that safety net of somewhere I can go and work is kind of how I've set myself up to being able to go pursue this career as a wrestler. So I think it was a smart decision overall. Oh, yeah. And... But if I were to go back and, like, actually pursue like a passion in college it would probably have been something like along the lines of broadcast and media so it's it's not as hard as it looks i'm gonna say that outright i mean i literally sit here and i record myself talking to people about what i love to talk about and (laughs) you know i have t-shirts and a slight source of income just from this you know nice yeah, so it's like... Yeah, that, but you got it going while you're young, so it's only going to grow. You of know, course. Um, but no, I'm saying if you ever want to get into this, you know, just grab a camera, man. I mean, you're just off your name alone, people will click it. Oh, yeah. Which... You know, that's, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, to develop that, you know, as I get into wrestling. I really want to be a performer and a wrestler, and I really want to have... I want to be somebody that's known for their for their skill in the ring as well as their charisma and their ability on the mic. You know what Absolutely. I mean? I don't want to be one or the other. I don't want to be like, oh, he's good on the mic. He can sell himself, but God, he's sloppy as hell in the ring. Or, oh, wow, he's so talented physically, but God damn, he sounds like a brick on the mic. You know what I mean? I want to oh, be, yeah. I want to be the whole package. You know, I want to be the Shawn Michaels um, of wrestling, as you know, or, you know, the Flying Brian, as they say. I mean, my dad was very skilled in both aspects. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, that very unforgettable, that very real character that he had. And he was also such a huge athlete, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which, you know, it looks like you have the tools kind of set up. You know, you just need to go through and put in the work now. Um, Oh, yeah, I've got to learn the trade. Absolutely. Because, you know, um, second generation or not, it's not just going to naturally come to you. It's not a real thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of work. It's not going to be easy. Oh, yeah, the wrestling and learning all the moves and stuff. I think I'm physically able. I'm in very good shape. But uh, it's a lot of learning. And it's, you know, I did, I did like, amateur wrestling in high school. So, like, when you're in the circle and you got to, you know, pin them, like, you know, collegiate oh, yeah. wrestling or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I've Absolutely. done that. But that's a lot different, you know. Oh, yeah, I did that, too. That was, oh, that was great times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, do you ever... Sorry, I'm a little... Stopped up. I probably sound like I'm talking on my nose. Oh, not at all, man. Um, the weather's crazy here in Cincinnati. It changes every day. Oh, that's why I feel, um, you know, because, like, in the desert, desert doesn't know what it wants to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you're in Arizona, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's craziness. But, um, it's nice and dry there, right? 
Oh, it's dry. It's so dry. Um, but, you know, being Latino, this is quite literally where my people come from, so it doesn't really... Yeah. Not really, like, you know, that bad for me. Yeah, you're, you're used to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, has it... Has it come to you that at all that, you know, it's... I, I guess the want to possibly... You, you said you want to continue what your dad started, but have you ever thought that you'd... I don't know. A lot of guys who are second generation kind of want to outgrow their name. I mean, Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas, neither one use their dad's name. Yeah, so I know I know. I don't want to use... I mean, I just happen to have the exact same name as him, you know what I mean? The junior is a significant difference. Yeah, so like... It's it's you know it's it's weird. I have I have some options where I can go with this. My I have a different middle name, so like my title is not specifically a junior. Like it doesn't say junior on my birth certificate. I don't have that as a title. But it's it's weird because their 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 dads as wrestlers are still alive, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like their dads are still wrestling entities in themselves still. So they don't want to just take on that name. Right, but my dad was kind of just like, not only do we have the same name, but he was also cut off by being, you know, by dying, right? So, like, it's almost like a need to sort of replace his entity in wrestling, like his oh. his self, you know, his being and his character. So I almost feel this, this, this urge to just go with that and to just be, you know, be Brian Pillman, but maybe not like the loose cannon Brian Pillman, but maybe a spinoff of that name, like. You know, not not make up some random bullshit name. You know what I mean? Of like, course. Still stick with Brian Pillman, but have like a different nickname too. Yeah, because like that. you know, I'm the Martian. And, like you want to be a different, you know, not maybe not flying, maybe not loose cannon, but you know, yeah. your own Brian Pillman. Yeah, but still, but still have that name. Still be that, way that people get to get to attach that nostalgia. You know what I mean? Of course, of course. Because That's... they can't copyright my name. I mean, as much as you know, they have like. The other, like, Loose Cannon, Flying Brian Pillman, they might own those copyrights, but they can't copyright Brian Pillman. I mean, that's my name. I can use that. Of course. And whatever I append onto that can be, like, a tribute, like, you know, some sort of word or slogan that can tribute to my father um, in some way. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's interesting. And I, I want to meet, honestly, I, I do want to be creative and have control over my, you know, my character going into it because, they, you know, that's how it works in the independent shows. Is you gotta kind of develop your own character, but I would do. I would love to meet with some, you know, with some very professional people and just decide what would be an ultimately good theme for this. Because I think there's a lot of angles that we can take this on. Absolutely, this my character coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things. Oh, good. One of the things I've noticed is that a lot of my favorite, like, you know, now that I have a free platform, I can use to like talk to wrestlers and talk to the the real guys, not just the character that they portray. I notice a lot of the time that the best characters really are just the guy. Like, I was talking to Famous B just yesterday. Um, look him up if you get a chance if you don't know who he is. Um, yeah. He really is like that in real life. Like, he makes a lot of, like, hip-hop references when he talks in his promos. But if you're talking to him, you know, he'll be like, yeah, you went from 0 to 100 real quick. Like, he really does just talk like that. And that's oh, why yeah. the character comes off so natural. Oh, yeah. And I think my just myself, I've, you know, a lot of my life experiences have shaped the person I am today. And I think a lot of people will tell you that I have that I have a certain character to myself, whether it's people that work with me or or people that play sports with me. I, I do I do stick out. I'm very very different, and people can tell that right away. I'm I'm a little con- you know I'm a little contagious. My personality is a little contagious. I have a very contagious laugh. I have a very oh, yeah. I stick out. Let's just put it that way. And I think I'm going to stick out in the wrestling industry as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I definitely know how that, that feels. I mean, I call myself the Martian for God's sakes. Did you really think I was <laughs> trying to aim for being the normal guy? No, I did. I think it's pretty cool, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously it's not literal, you know? Before long, I mean, before long it might be. You might move there. <laughs> the, rate, the rate of technology is going now. You might move there. That would be really cool. Be like, oh, I was the Martian before any of us got here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that's hilarious. Uh, oh, God, that makes me think, like, what if there was, like, a Martian wrestler and, like, to be different, he called himself the human? <laughs> <laughs> that would just be weird. Earthman. Earthman. 
Oh, uh, that would that would just get weird after a while. Um, you know, just just talking like, I guess um, about you know, I mean, are there? I don't know. I guess how much how, how deep have you really delved so far? I mean, so okay, so let's backtrack. Let's backtrack. When did you decide that this is what you were gonna do? Um. So let's see. Through my messages, I honestly woke up one morning and I said that I'm fucking doing this. You know what I mean? It, it was like, it was like I woke up from the age of like eleven, like since I could really start remembering shit, up until the age of twenty, you know, three. Like up until this year, I would wake up every morning and just think of it in the back of my head, like you know, what if I became a wrestler one day or this that? You know what I mean? Like I've always thought of it. And it really wasn't till this year that I really said, you know, fuck what everybody else thinks. Like, fuck all, you know, fuck everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do this for me and I'm going to do this because it's like my legacy. And I said, I'm going to just jump out there and do this. Like, I already had a job, you know, lined up and I was waking up nine to five every day. You know how it is. Absolutely. And, you know, you just, you get into that routine. It's the same thing every day. And you're not really doing something you love. You're doing something that you're okay doing. Like, I like technology, but I don't love it. Like, I don't love sitting down at the desk every day. So, finally, I was like, screw this. Like, I'm going to get in, into wrestling. I'm going to immerse myself in it. And I'm going to sit, you know, I'm going to sit on the internet. I'm going to listen to podcasts. I'm going to browse the wrestling Reddit. And I'm going to get into this and figure out what makes this industry tick. Like, how do you deliver a promo? Like, how do you do these moves and stuff? And obviously, the moves and the training and that's going to come. But, I'm still going to do all the research I can right now up until September. Absolutely. I'm going to learn about what the fans want. And you got, you kind of got these two different uh, sections of fans, right? So you got like, you got like the internet community. Yep. The IWC. Yeah. They're, they're, so they're hardcore. They really believe in all the bullshit and like, they really, they know what they want to see and they know where they want, where they want to take the wrestlers. They know who they want to be. Um, the heels and who they want to be, who they want to push and stuff like that. And they think that they ought to know, right? So they're like the experts, right? Yeah. But then you have like the mainstream fans, which are like the kids and like the families and shit that go, the people that could give a shit less about like the inner workings of how wrestling is booked and stuff, you know? And they're like, you know, so you have, you have to try to appeal to both of them. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So it's like people get upset about the whole, Goldberg, you know, coming out and everything, but yeah. like honestly, that's probably to appeal to the mainstream fans. Like, come WrestleMania, a lot of guys I know, like kids that I grow up with, don't know who Kevin Owens is. You yep. know what I mean? They could give a fuck less about Kevin Owens. And honestly, just from watching him, I'm not that impressed by him either. I mean, I'm sure he's. I'm, I'm sure if I, you know, did some more research on him, I might find something that I like. But like, as an outsider, people don't care that this guy quote unquote worked hard all season for the belt you know what I mean like yeah. they want to see two jacked up monsters pound the absolute look, crap out of each other like, that look like they're actually going to go toe to toe like Brock Lesnar and Goldberg look like an actual match like a competitive battle like Brock Lesnar versus Kevin Owens I mean Brock Lesnar would break Kevin Owens in half if it was like a real battle you know what I mean Absolutely. like it just doesn't look realistic like, I'm sure Kevin Owens is a great athlete, but, like, he wouldn't last a millisecond in a ring with, with Brock Lesnar. And it maybe and probably Goldberg wouldn't either. But I'm saying, like, Goldberg at least looks the part. Like, Goldberg is fucking huge and scary. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, people in the mainstream audience, they want to see something big and something colossal like that. Oh, yeah. The people with, like, the internet wrestling community and, like, the hardcore fans are like, oh, well... You know, Kevin's been getting pushed all this time, and then they just fucking take it away from him with a 28-second match, and it's like, well, you got two, you know, you got, you got, who, who's going to make you more money? You know, the massive, the mass amount of fans or the small, nitpicky amount of fans, you know, so that's just kind of something I've been analyzing as of late, and, you know, trying to pick apart the different types of fans and how to please, how to please those fans, and, but I think you learn a lot from the fans. I think you learn a lot from how how wrestling is portrayed and how wrestling ought to be from the fans. So. That's a very different outlook on it, is that like a lot of guys will watch wrestling, 
pick out the parts they like and try to emulate that as opposed to trying to pick out the parts they think other people like. Yeah, because at the end of the day, those are the people that are that are paying for your tickets and paying for your t-shirts as the fans, right? Absolutely. But I will say I really like, you know, obviously everybody likes AJ Styles, but I really like AJ Styles. I think he's, I think he's very much an athlete. I think he's very impressive. Absolutely. And the dude's busted his ass. I mean, ever since I was a kid, that motherfucker was in, like, TNA instead. And, like, he's been around forever. He was, even had a short, he, short stint in the WCW. Yeah. And, like, now he's now he's just now getting in the WWE. I mean, when did he get into the WWE? Like, a year or two ago? year and a half ago, I think. Like, Jesus You're Christ. You're testing me on that so one. Long? Like, what took them so long to sign that dude? I mean, he's the, he's the best talent they got. And, uh... I really like his style because it reminds me of my father's style, you know, that high flying, like very athletic and, you know, very flashy moves and very flashy style. So maybe, maybe he's just, I haven't watched a lot of his promos, but maybe he's not that skilled on the mic. I don't know. I don't know what their qualms with him are, but, uh, I definitely think he deserves every little, every bit of spotlight he's been given. He deserves it all. Cause he's, he's a great worker. And, uh, you know, I always like Kurt Angle, obviously. Kurt Angle's a good dude. Oh, yeah. I was reading his uh, AMA on Reddit the other day. and I mean, these fans would ask questions. And they would they would send him a block of text and a question. And he would send them four blocks of text back. Nice. Like, send them these loaded answers just with all kinds of details into the, you know, into the behind the scenes of, of wrestling and stuff. Do you ever get on that, the Reddit, the Squared Circle Reddit? I actually, that's that's one place I never seem to really stray into. I find, I don't know what it is. You know, it's I use technology to try and build my. Have you not been there before? No, nah, I'm, I'm not. I don't. Like I was trying to get into. I don't physically understand Reddit. <laughs> like what it is, or like I don't get on. The, I don't actually get on there and post, but uh, I like to just read and lurk on there. But uh, I'll send you the link on on here if you want. Absolutely. It's, very, it's, just, it's just really insightful. I use it. To, I've used it to research stuff in college. I've used it for. Um, when I was in esports, like different, absolutely different video games I played competitively. Something you um, might want to check out is Vice. Is that a news thing? Absolutely, Vice is a news site. They do oh, yeah, Vice. sort of untraditional news, so to speak. Um, yeah. And they've done tons of articles on wrestling, and you might want to check those out. Definitely, a really helpful read uh, from the yeah, student I perspective. I didn't know they were like wrestling and stuff too, but yeah. They do everything, but, you know, they've done some articles on wrestling that are extremely insightful. No, awesome. That's cool. Because basically what this Reddit does is it links to other websites, you know, yep. it links to other articles and, you know, Twitter and stuff. I've also found that wrestling is very focused on Twitter. There's a lot going on on Twitter. Oh, yeah. That's why yeah. it... it's a lot about podcasts, too. There's a lot of podcasts going on. <laughs> You're on one right now. <laughs> People like to talk. It's a very meta like to thing to say. Yeah, I know. It's, I think it's interesting. It's like it's like people just love to talk about it. They love to keep the keep the rumors and the gossip going. They love to keep the talk about wrestling going. And at the end of the day, that's that's what keeps the fans so engaged. And I think wrestlers are way more engaged than other athletes. Like you don't see NFL players sitting on you know podcasts with random people like you know expressing their opinions of behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Like you don't really see them indulging with their fans. And I think with wrestling, you really see that. And you see wrestlers doing a lot of philanthropy and doing a lot of signings and really getting out there and, and being heroes and being stars for these fans. So that's something I've always I've started to learn to love about wrestling as I've as I've been watching it more and more and getting into it. And, and I'm going to get uh, WWE Network here this next week. I'm going to go back and start watching all my dad's matches and stuff because it's, it's hard to find those old matches. Oh, yeah. Saying. Yeah, I mean, you really, I mean, WWE, the, the one thing WWE does right is that fucking music artists and other television people can't get right is keeping their shit locked up. Like, you really got to pay for their stuff, unless you want to go and torrent it, you know. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, you could torrent anything, but but they're really smart about keeping their intellectual property and keeping their their brand, you know, locked up. And that way, those, that way those wrestlers get paid, because what happens when people start illegally downloading and watching shit all the time is... You know the wrestlers start making less money, and that's what that's not what they want. And, and I, I think the I think the industry has a lot of longevity to it. I really do. I think in UFC, your career might last, you know, four to ten years, maybe, because you're just getting banged up. You know, you're getting knocked the fuck out. 
you're getting murdered. But oh, yeah. like, so you can't really fall in love with a fighter in UFC. You can't, you can't follow his career forever because he's just gonna be done after a few years. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. With wrestling, it's like shit. Triple H is still kicking. You know how long is that motherfucker wrestling? Oh yeah, a long time. So you got a lot of longevity. You get more value out of your stars. You really do. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, like, granted, it's like, you know, we get banged up pretty bad, too. Well, it's, I always fear saying the word we, because I am not a wrestler. I'm a wrestler in training. I really, I really stress that part of my title. But, um, you know, wrestlers do get banged up. It's just a more or less a, you know, uh, I don't know what is different about, uh, wrestling as opposed to, to real, to, uh, other combat sports is like, you know, we can take that amount of punishment and yet have like a 20 year career that's weird when you really think about it you know oh yeah oh yeah i mean i mean they can they can go forever i mean look at kurt angle he's getting back into the business you know what i mean so rick i mean okay. rick flair did it for nearly 40 years yeah and that's crazy and I mean, they're, and they're doing a lot of, you know, you're doing a lot of stunts, and you are getting hurt. I mean, you have the potential to get hurt really badly. Oh yes, absolutely. But uh, have you ever read uh, Foley's book? No, I have not. No, so uh, uh, the <laughs> it's funny you just mentioned them being able to keep all their intellectual property like down. Yeah. The whole book's on YouTube audio, like Foley reading you the book. It's actually really really cool. Um, I'll send you the well, link. Is it, well, is it produced by the WWE or is it produced by Mick Foley himself? I believe a publishing company Mick Foley worked for for a short time. Oh, okay. So yeah. Kind of like so they did not keep that locked down very well. Oh, Because uh, yeah. well, the yeah. whole audio book is on YouTube. I'll send you the link. Um, but anyways, um, what was I talking about? All right, all right. Um, he mentions how he's got like, I think in total near like, I want to say like 300 in- injuries. Mm-hmm. And that's insanity. Because, like, you always hear about, like, how there's that one injury that takes you out for so long. Yeah. And then yeah. Foley's like, oh, yeah, you know, 300, no, whatever. Damn. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah, he's, nuts. He's a bad dude. He's a bad motherfucker, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Absolutely. And I remember I remember meeting him as a kid. I mean, you wouldn't believe a lot, so many of the stars that I was just friends with as a child. I mean, they were really, really close to me, and they really took care of me. I mean, Triple H changed my diapers at one point. That's hilarious. You know? So, so it's it's crazy because, like, I, I still, you know, I haven't quite connected with all those big names yet. I'm still kind of, every now and then, I'll you know, I'll start connecting with them, and more and more of them will be reaching out to me, but I think once I get into it, once I start training and people start seeing me out there, I think the buzz is really going to pick up. And I think those guys are really going to extend their hand and extend their friendship towards me because they were really good friends with my dad and they really loved my dad. Oh yeah. When you look at the like when you look at the memorial shows like of me as a little kid and the pictures I got one picture on my Instagram. Yep. You got Rey Mysterio sitting there without his mask on, like hanging out. You know. You got all kinds of guys. You got you know uh, Chris Benoit and his wife in that picture and. Um, it's just it's just crazy because I grew up thinking like oh like you know wrestlers there's all new wrestlers now you know I was like oh no one's gonna remember the old Brian Pillman like I mean, he died ninety seven and it's twenty years later and a lot of those older guys are still in the business you know they're still wrestling because I, I always thought it was you know not you know not a very long career I thought there would be all new guys by now like mm. no one would remember him well there it well okay you're you're right and wrong because yeah yeah there's a lot of new guys but yeah there's a lot of new guys but a lot of the old guys are still kicking yeah and they're they're either doing it like the Hardys you know they're they're still in the business they're not in the WWE but the Hardys were at my dad's shows they they were friendly you know, they were friendly to me and I'm sure Jeff will remember me absolutely I'm sure a lot of guys are gonna remember you and you're just gonna be like what I'm just gonna be like what up brother yeah, and I a thought just occurred to me that kind of blew my mind. So, um, have you heard of the Four Horsewomen? No, I have not. Okay, so uh, there's Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Bailey, and okay. Sasha Banks. Um, Charlotte okay. Flair is Charlotte Flair is the only actual horsewoman because her dad is Rick, but oh. um, they just call themselves that as like a unit for some reason. And then there's there's a girl in the Indies who you'll probably run into pretty quickly, Tessa Blanchard, who is also a horsewoman by birthright. Oh, okay. You're the first guy. 
of the horseman? You're the first second gen horse guy. Wow. Yeah. Uh, how long? Uh, I have to. I want to look more into that because I've seen different iterations of the horseman. Well, so there's been different guys. That yeah. There, there was around. like. But I know my dad was a part of it for one for for at least a while. For at least a little while, I know it was Sting had a part, Luger had a part, uh, Flair, the Andersons, um, Blanchard. And okay. Yeah. What's um, her name? One more time. Her name's Tessa. Tessa Blanchard. Yeah. Yeah, you'll probably bump into her real quick. Um, that just seems logical to me. I don't know why. Um, what promotions is she in right now? Tons. She works... Well, she's a... One thing that's weird about chick indie wrestling is that they kind of have their own promotions. Yeah, that's true. They kind of got their own, like, girl things. Which, which is almost better because they... Um, okay, so, so who I... Was, who was her father then? Um, Tully. Wait, that doesn't okay. sound right. Tully Blanchard, is that right? I could be saying that wrong. I don't okay, know. So she's a third generation wrestler. She is. She is. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's crazy. But anyways, like that's kind of weird to think that like you know you're the first um, horseman guy kid. Yeah, that's, that's kind of random, but it's kind of cool. I didn't realize that. So wait, Ric Flair didn't have other boys. Uh, he had uh, David and Reed. Reed has unfortunately passed away, and David, I believe he's still alive, but he's not into the business. Okay. Yeah, he was for a tiny bit, and just kind of like, nah, I'm not doing this. Wow. Okay. So yeah, a I lot of a lot of guys um, with like really big name dads decided not to be a part of it. Like, um, there's a guy in Major League Baseball who is on Hawaii, which means he's uh, Rock's family. Okay. Yeah, and like uh, I'm friends with him on Facebook, and I've asked him about it, and he's like, you know, man, I've just always loved baseball, so I decided to do that instead. I mean, a lot of guys don't get into it. Well, that is that is different. Yeah, you would think that it's such a. I feel like the fans as well as the industry really do play into the whole family thing. Like they really love it. They love the you know like like look at Randy Orton. I mean, he blew up because he was you know the third generational superstar and stuff like that. And I think the fans are awesome in that regard. They love to see the continuation. And I think that they love. I think that they're even more invested in in me because they, you know, my father was kind of taken from them, right? They weren't they weren't finished with him as fans. Well, they yeah, really that's love. Yeah, they wanted more of him, and then it was like, oh, he's not going to be here next week, and they were just like, fuck, like we miss Pillman, like we want Pillman back. So as much as I, you know, I hate when people say, oh, you just have an advantage because your dad was who he was. Well, it's like. It, like sure it's an advantage in a way but like also in a way i've gone through so much i had to deal with so much adversity because of his death because of his passing like growing up like i had to get out of so much like i had to overcome addiction and drugs and starvation to get where i am today that if these fans are willing to give me a chance to fulfill his you know to fill his legacy like i'm gonna give them every little bit that they want like i'm gonna be exactly who they want me to be like i'm gonna be a product of them in a way absolutely and that's that's something very special that, like, you have the opportunity to create for people. You know, there's going to be that dad in the crowd who was watching, you know, Pillman, uh, you know, Loose Cannon, High Flying Brian matches when he was young, and he's going to take his son to watch your matches. That's something very special you are in the position to create for people. You know, that's, that's like a once-in-a-lifetime type of thing. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. So, like, so like you said, like, I'm going to be running into... What are some other like up and coming indie people that I should let's see yeah, look at look out oh well obviously the indie scene in itself is just something you should look at because it is something oh, yeah. that is very special but like if you're specifically asking about like you know other guys kids or like just indie wrestlers in general do you know of any like other second generation kids that are just now oh in? tons um let me see um Scott Hall's son is wrestling his name's Cody Hall. Okay, I think I've seen him. Uh, he's a big son of a gun. I need to get him on yeah. the show. Um, and when I, I mean physically big, like he's six eight. Oh yeah, he's a big dude. Monster yeah. man, I love that. Um, I've seen him. Yeah, like he could like do the um, like springboard moves, and it's crazy to watch because you see just like this like giant flying object is insane. <laughs> um, yeah. You ever heard of Big Sean Stud? Um, no. That's Big John Stud's son. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, but we may have to continue this off camera because we're actually kind of running out of time here. Oh, no, you're cool. 
Yeah, but uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. Uh, Brian, thank you for coming on, man. Hell yeah, dude. I appreciate the you know the casual chit chat and banter. So oh yeah. It wasn't. Uh, we didn't, you know, get everything in there that you wanted to. You kind of had to cut me off, but oh, well, is that okay? Or uh, that's absolutely fine. Hey, oh, maybe okay. we'll do a part two. Oh yeah, we absolutely. Might. I'm not opposed to that. Got a lot. It's just because I'm I'm so uh, new, I guess, to the scene that I'm asking you a lot of questions as well. Like this that's kind of weird. I just realized that I was kind of yeah, asked like, questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm turning it on you, so I kind of apologize for that. No, that's that's fine, man. This show is for a young for a young kid. You're very knowledgeable, and well, thank you. I like to learn from the fans as much as the fans like to learn about my story. So, good. Um, th- yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, do you have anything you know you want to 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 plug? You know, tell them to like follow you on social media and whatnot. Yeah. So you can follow me obviously on uh, Instagram at Flying Brian Forty One, and on Twitter I'm known as GCD Pills. That was my old uh, gamer tag back when I played. Uh, League of Legends competitively. Oh my <laughs> god, you played League of Legends competitively. We're having a part two. That settles it. <laughs> so that's kind of like, that was how my Twitter, because my Twitter started off as like a gaming Twitter, and then I played some Smash Brothers for a little bit, went to some tournaments for Smash Brothers. Oh my god. And it was always kind of like at GCD Pills, but I kind of keep, I'm going to keep, you know, you can't change your tag. or Absolutely. So yeah, so like I'm going to keep that as like an allusion towards my, towards my past. Of course. But uh, but my name on Twitter is the Loose Cannon Junior. Like with the, the name that you can't change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Snapchat, I'm Flying Brian Forty One, and then obviously Facebook is just my name. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. You know, make sure to you know share this video, like this video, show Brian as much support as you possibly can, because you know I, I see, we're seeing the tools, we're seeing we're seeing the love, man. This could be something very special that you guys could be able to jump on like as soon as it started. That's a very extremely unique opportunity. Um, thank you again, Brian, for coming on the show. We'll see you fans next time. And I just need to hit the...